Have you ever wondered who was behind the infamous I love you virus? This digital menace, also known as the Love Bug, made its debut on the 5th of May 2000, and in no time it was wreaking havoc on over 10 million Windows computers worldwide. This was not a small-scale operation, it was the work of a mastermind, a man named Ronel de Guzman from the Philippines. A computer programmer by trade, de Guzman crafted this worm with such precision and ingenuity that it spread like wildfire, causing significant damages estimated in the billions of dollars. The I Love You virus was not your average worm. It exploited vulnerabilities in Windows systems and Microsoft Outlook, spreading rapidly through email networks. It was the digital equivalent of a pandemic, infecting every system it touched and leaving digital chaos in its wake. But what was the motive behind such an act of digital disruption? It turns out, de Guzman had a unique belief. He saw internet access as a basic human right, and he intended to steal passwords to access the internet without paying. It was a radical idea that led to a catastrophic outcome. This incident did not go unnoticed. De Guzman, along with another programmer, Rayonel Ramones, faced a criminal investigation by the Philippines National Bureau of Investigation. The fallout from the I Love You virus was so severe it led to the enactment of the e-commerce law in the Philippines, a law designed to deter similar activities. In the heart of this digital chaos was a man named Onel de Guzman. Who exactly is this Onel de Guzman? The man behind the infamous I Love You virus. Let's journey back to the Philippines of the late 90s, where a young man named Onel de Guzman was nurturing his passion for computers. Raised in a modest neighborhood in Manila, de Guzman's fascination with technology was apparent from an early age. This interest would later lead him to pursue his studies at AMA Computer College, where he would delve deeper into the intricacies of computer systems and networks. But it wasn't just a love for computers that defined de Guzman. He was also known for his strong beliefs, particularly when it came to the issue of internet access. To de Guzman, internet access was more than just a tool or a luxury, it was a fundamental human right. This belief would later become a driving force behind his notorious creation. At the time de Guzman was studying and formulating his ideas, the Philippines was somewhat of a wild west when it came to cybercrime. The country had no legislation against such activities, meaning that individuals like de Guzman could experiment and push the boundaries of what was possible without fear of legal repercussions. This lack of regulation created an environment where the creation of something as destructive as the I love you virus was not just possible, but in some ways inevitable. But what could possibly motivate someone to create such a destructive piece of code? That's a question we'll dive into in the next part of our story. Stay tuned as we explore the motivations of a virus creator. Imagine believing internet access is a human right, so much so that you're willing to commit a global cybercrime. This was the conviction that drove Onel de Guzman, the creator of the infamous I Love You virus. This wasn't a random act of chaos, but a calculated move born out of a belief that everyone should have unrestricted access to the World Wide Web. In the late 90s and early noughties, internet access was a luxury many couldn't afford, especially in countries like the Philippines. De Guzman saw the internet as the great equalizer, a tool that could bridge the gap between the haves and the have-nots. He was desperate to bring this vision to life, so desperate that he was willing to steal passwords to gain free internet access. He created a worm that would not only achieve his goals, but would also expose the vulnerabilities of the systems we relied on. De Guzman's intentions were not entirely malicious. He was driven by a radical belief, one that is becoming more mainstream today, that internet access is a basic human right. While his methods were questionable, his motivations warrant a deeper conversation about digital equity. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the video and let's continue our journey with Onel de Guzman. So where is the man who once shook the digital world now? After the chaos of the I Love You virus, the world turned its attention to its creator, Onel de Guzman. 
the Philippines National Bureau of Investigation launched a probe into his actions, no doubt hoping to bring him to justice. But here's the twist. They couldn't. Why, you ask? Well, it's simple. There were no cybercrime laws in the Philippines at the time. That's right. De Guzman couldn't be charged for his actions, as what he had done wasn't technically illegal. It's a bit like trying to charge someone for jaywalking before traffic laws were established. This gaping hole in their legislation didn't go unnoticed. Following the investigation, or rather, the lack thereof, the Philippines enacted the e-commerce law. This was a landmark move designed to deter similar activities in the future. It's a bit like shutting the barn door after the horse is bolted, but at least it's shut now. So what about de Guzman? What happened to the man who'd caused billions of dollars in damages and infected over 10 million computers worldwide? Well, following the investigation, he seemed to disappear from the public eye. It's like he just vanished into thin air. Rumors swirled about his whereabouts, with some suggesting he'd gone into hiding, while others speculated he'd changed his name and was living a quiet life away from the limelight. There were even whispers that he'd found a job in the tech industry, though these remain unconfirmed. It's a bit like the ending of a mystery novel, isn't it? The protagonist fades into the background, leaving us with more questions than answers. But maybe that's fitting for a man who once held the digital world in the palm of his hand. Onel de Guzman, a name synonymous with one of the most infamous viruses in history, has faded into obscurity. What can we learn from the I love you virus and its creator, Onel de Guzman? This question leads us down a fascinating path of discovery, one that reveals the importance of cybersecurity, the impact of cybercrime, and the legislative changes that the incident prompted. The I love you virus was a wake-up call for the world. It showed us just how vulnerable our digital systems were and still are. It underlined the need for robust cybersecurity measures. In an age where our lives are increasingly digitized, the importance of protecting our digital assets can't be overstated. The virus also highlighted the devastating impact of cybercrime. It's estimated that the I love you virus caused damages in the billions of dollars. That's a staggering figure and it demonstrates just how costly these cyber attacks can be. It's not just about the financial loss either. The virus disrupted lives, stole personal information and caused widespread panic. The incident also prompted changes in legislation. In the aftermath of the I Love You virus, the Philippines enacted the e-commerce law to deter similar activities. This was a significant step forward in the fight against cybercrime. It showed that governments were willing to take decisive action to protect their citizens in the digital world. But what about the ethical implications of de Guzman's actions? He believed that internet access was a human right and created the virus to steal passwords for free internet access. While his actions were undoubtedly wrong, they do raise an interesting question. Is internet access a human right? This is a debate that continues today, with many arguing that access to the internet is essential for participation in modern society. In the end, the I Love You virus serves as a stark reminder of the digital world's vulnerabilities and the importance of cybersecurity. It's a lesson we must all take to heart. As we navigate the digital world, let's remember to protect ourselves and our digital assets. Let's be vigilant, be safe, and be aware of the risks that come with our digital lives. Don't miss out on future explorations and discoveries. Hit subscribe and ring the bell to stay updated with our new content. Your journey of wonder continues with every video. Stay connected and engaged on social media. Continue the conversation, follow us. Thank you for being a part of the Have You Ever Wondered community. Keep wondering, keep discovering. Until next time.